Hey guys, I told the story once and I didn't really like how I told this. I'm going to try to tell it again. Anyways, my neighbor Dilly the Dill Pickle, his son was watching a Disney movie and it was the one Disney movie that generated this memory. So I won't tell you guys what the Disney movie is yet. You guys will figure it out kind of like how I figured it out during this memory. So obviously, for those of you who are adults watching the channel, Unless you have kids, you probably don't just go watch Disney movies, right? And so this memory took place when I was in high school. And obviously, when you're in high school, it's been a few years since you've seen a Disney movie. So, high school, I went to a different high school than my middle school, right? So I didn't really know anyone there. So I didn't know what the culture of the high school was. But my col my culture, my culture, yeah, my high school was one of those col- Okay, I'm getting too excited. My high school was one of those high schools that tried really hard to celebrate multiculturalism. It tried to celebrate the different major ethnic groups in our school. So, for those of you who didn't grow up in America, let me just fill you in. There's different months designated for the major, what you call racial groups in America. Again, whether race is a social thing or whatever, we're not getting into that debate, but- um, the school year is September to May, sometimes maybe early June. So Hispanic Heritage Month is in the fall. So usually you would have Hispanic Heritage Month and then Black History Month after that. And then Asian History Month would be in May. So Asian History Month was after the Hispanic assemblies and then the black student assemblies. So basically what would happen during these assemblies would be the people who are part of the Hispanic club or the uh, black student union or the Asian club, they would present a bunch of different things to show off your culture. And so when I first got to freshman year of high school, first time seeing the Hispanic assembly, right? Of course, a lot of dancing, celebrating Selena, and then uh, after that, a few months later, Black History Month, the Black Student Union would put on the their celebration of black history in America. So, you know, appreciation of Ray Charles, uh, Jimi Hendrix, and then some other stuff, some rapping, etc. And then it was time for the Asian people, right? The Asian students. Now, I was part of the Asian Student Club, whatever it's called, but I wasn't involved in the assembly. And thinking back on it, maybe it was a good thing. So... Anyways, all the students are in the audience, in the big, it's not an amphitheater, what do you call it? Like a big uh, th theater, I guess? And uh, we're watching the people on stage. And of course, if it's an Asian student assembly, right? They're going to have kung fu, right? They're going to have martial arts. They had some dancing, right? And then... Um, they had this one act. There was this girl. I knew this girl. She was, I think, a senior. She was older than me. Um, she was from my region of China, but she grew up in France. You know, that's the definition of multiculturalism, right? She was from my region of China originally, and then she grew up in France, and then now she's in America. And they pumped her up so much. The people, the MCs, as you call them, MCs are the people who announce the acts, right? And... They're like, yeah, amazing vocal talent. And I don't think I've heard her sing, but I was like, obviously, most people of, let's see, most people of Chinese and most people of Korean culture can sing because our language naturally is tonal. Maybe not Koreans. I don't know. Koreans, let me know. But it's very hard for Chinese people to be tone deaf, right? In fact, I don't think I've ever met a Chinese person that's tone deaf, as in he or she can't process melody because again just you develop this ability to recognize words based on how the sound comes out of your mouth in different ways but it's pronounced the same right so a a pitch is not the same as a tone in mandarin or cantonese or whatever but there's similarities so you develop that area of your brain early anyways getting ahead of myself an average chinese person should not be too bad at singing right so she starts singing Again, Asian assembly, okay? They're supposed to be celebrating Asian culture. <laughs> you guys, some of you know where this is going. So she starts singing. <laughs> and I will sing you maybe two lines of the song. Some of you who know Disney will probably immediately recognize this song. And you're going to be like, what the heck? Anyways, so she starts. It's, Which ends I fully can't 
。我想要问你，为的是什么？请聆听大地万物心中话语，他的泪，他的喜悲和生命。So yeah, for those of you who recognize this, you're probably going, "What?" Right? I'm. Sort of recognizing this, but again, she's singing in Chinese, and the majority of people attending the assembly, all the students, all the teachers, are like, "Yeah,"、uh, she's singing in Chinese. They're probably taking a longer time to process which song this is, right? But in the back of my mind, I'm like, "Wait, is this actually the one I'm thinking of?" And so she keeps singing, she keeps singing, and at this point, I know which Disney movie this is from, right? And then. To make it extra clear, because in her mind she's thinking, "Well, I gotta show the people watching what movie this is from, right? Because many of them will recognize it." She starts singing in English, and then when she starts singing in English, all of us turn to each other. It was me, Ian, Sasha, Albert. You know, there's a row of us Asians kind of looking at each other, being like, "What? What?" For for those of you who haven't figured it out. She's singing from Pocahontas. She's singing "Colors of the Wind." So, <laughs> let me just look up the lyrics really quick. If you guys have need a reminder of the lyrics of it, so let me find it. So, by the chorus of the song, th- this girl starts singing in English. You know, have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon? Or ask the grinning bobcat why he grinned. Can you sing with all the voices of the mountain? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Again, guys, this song is much higher, right? So, the issue with fobby people, like. Fob means fresh off the boat. Basically, people who aren't native to the language is when they sing in the language and they don't really even pronounce well. It's really cringe because part of being able to sing well is to relax, right? It's counterintuitive. This vocal cord right here, it's too low muscles, right? But to make it able to function well, you have to relax the rest of your body. But if you're new to a language, You're not relaxing your pronunciation because you don't know how to pronounce correctly. So it makes the singing extra cringe because if you tense up your body when you sing high, you're gonna sound bad. And she sounded bad when she sang in English, man. Ooh, it was bad. But to add insult to injury was the fact that by this point, unless you really were not familiar with Disney movies, every single person in the audience. Was realizing, wait, this is Pocahontas. Why are we singing Pocahontas at an Asian assembly? We're supposed to be celebrating Asian Americans. We're supposed to be celebrating Asian heritage. Why is she singing Pocahontas? <laughs> and yeah, I mean, at this point, most of us were holding our ears because, again, she wasn't singing well, and it's not her fault. I mean, it was her fault. You know, you should have picked a better song. You shouldn't have picked the song. But yeah. She's singing Pocahontas, man. And obviously, you could say that Native Americans, right? American Indians share genes with East Asians. But then, if you make that argument, we also share East Asians share genes with Africans, right? So, like, you can't if you if you. It's like where do you draw the boundary, right? Like, where do you draw the boundary as to what's representation, what's not representation? That's why multiculturalism is kind of hard, right? Because at the end of the day, we're all genetically very similar. You know, certain things. Change little attributes in us. So, on one hand, it was like, what's the right word? It was really for thinking of her to sing Pocahontas, but it was also really cringe of her because obviously Pocahontas was about American Indians, right? Native Americans. So, eventually, after the assembly, that was one of the low cringe moments, right? The assembly had good moments. Like there are four really pretty girls dancing to. K-pop and stuff, right? This was before K-pop was really mainstream in America. But man, it doesn't matter if you're mainstream. You know, girls dancing to K-pop, it looks really good, right? So after the assembly, we go back to class, and of course, we're all talking about the assembly, and everyone's talking about the sink, and 
And I remember this one friend of mine was like, dude, that girl singing Mulan was really bad. And I'm like, no, she wasn't singing Mulan. She was singing Pocahontas. And the look on his face, he's like, what the fuck? Why was she singing Pocahontas? And she's singing bad. How does Pocahontas have anything to do with Asian heritage? <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's my memory. That's my story. Um, maybe it was just such a cringe moment. I don't know if this girl, because again, she wasn't from America, right? She was a Chinese girl that grew up in France. So I don't know if she knew how much cringe she caused. And maybe nowadays, like nowadays where American, where Western society is, that would have been okay because our society's gone in so many morphed ways that like black doesn't mean white, white doesn't mean black, you know, two plus two doesn't always mean four anymore, right? So our society's morphed in a weird way. But back then when it was still, I guess you would call it like the 1.0 or the beta version of being woke, right? Uh, back then it still cringed us out. It was like, why is she singing Pocahontas? So you guys let me know what you think about this. <laughs> How would you have reacted? What do you think this girl was thinking? Again, I didn't really get to talk to her after this moment. I think she probably secretly knew that nobody enjoyed her act, right? Because even during her singing, I think some people were like yelling, like, get off this stage. And people are mean, you know? People at high school and middle school are mean in different ways, right? So, yeah, that was my memory, guys. You guys let me know. Do you have any memories like this? Did your high school or middle school or college, I mean college, of course, but did your high school have assemblies to celebrate the different cultures in the school? And if you guys want more funny stories like this, I'm sure I have more. Because obviously, I don't remember every year the assemblies, right? But every year, so for four years, we had three assemblies. We had the Black Student Union Assembly, the Hispanic Student Union Assembly and the Asian Student Union Assembly. So obviously we had three assemblies. So three times four, that's 12. I have 12 assemblies of cringe for you, but I've sort of forgotten most of it. The one that always gets my mind going was that freshman year Asian student one because the girl sang Pocahontas. <laughs> Why didn't we have it like a Native American? I guess there wasn't enough Native American students in our school to have a Native American Student Union. But yeah, um, I'm sure, I don't know, Native American viewers, let me know. Would you have been proud or would you have been kind of like WTF or cringed out? Let me know. So you guys let me know. Do you have any assembly stories like that? Or, you know, if you're European, African, Asian or whatever, let me know about any sort of cringe stories like this, multiculturalism or foreign, foreigners or whatever. Like these stories are funny, right? So yeah. You guys let me know, man. I said the F word once too in this video. <laughs> once is usually fine according to YouTube. But anyways, guys, this was a fun little recollection slash memory slash story. And it was fun, man. I got more on this channel. You know, I upload once in a while, right? But every time I upload, it's funny. All right, guys, talk to you soon.